Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Chairman Morani and honorable <coughs> members of the Government Military and Veterans Affairs Committee, my name is uh, Sergeant Aaron Hansen, A-A-R-O-N, H-A-N-S-O-N. I'm a 20-year veteran of the Omaha Police Department, and I speak today on behalf of the men and women of the Omaha Police Officers Association and its president, Sergeant John Wells, who unfortunately could not attend today, but sends his regards. The Omaha Police Officers Association stands in opposition to LB 68 as it is written today. By and large, police officers do not generally fall into the category of so-called gun control advocates. Rather, police officers favor common sense gun laws to help us differentiate between the responsible law-abiding gun owners, the criminal element, and the irresponsible gun owners. In fact, the Omaha POA assisted with the passage of Nebraska's CCW law. It helped us differentiate between the law-abiding gun owners and people who may not fall into that category. Despite the fact that our brothers and sisters, both locally and nationally, have found themselves at the deadly end of criminals' gun barrels, you don't hear us advocating for restrictions on certain type of weapons, or even expanded capacity magazines. We respect and support law-abiding gun owners. We understand that they want to protect themselves and their families and their property when we can't be immediately available, but there must be a balance. Omaha's registration law, for example, which doesn't apply to CCW licensees, helps reunite numerous law-abiding citizens with their stolen firearms, some of which they didn't even realize were stolen in the first place. Large cities like Omaha, unfortunately, have a gang and gun crime challenges that are unique to highly populated urban areas. Standards that may work fine in a rural setting may cause dangerous complications in an urban setting. In the desolate rolling hills of Cherry County, an 18-year-old with a handgun might not be of great concern. That's not necessarily the case in Omaha, which prohibits via city code possession of a handgun under age 21. <coughs> Age 21 is coincidentally the same age in which one can acquire a state handgun purchase permit while mere possession is allowed per state law at age 18. The transportation of a loaded handgun might not raise an eyebrow in Albion, Nebraska, which hasn't experienced a homicide in almost 20 years, but it could raise a huge red flag for an Omaha police officer giving special attention to a West Omaha bar parking lot with a history of gang violence. And, recent, and, and a recent homicide of an innocent mother caught in the crossfire. Driving down a dirt road with a loaded AR-15 in your lap, while never advisable, might be more understandable for the keen-eyed rancher on the lookout for calf-killing coyotes. But some activity, that same activity, would be a huge concern on a road in Omaha, and especially in a stretch of road with a history of homicides or shootings. All the above-mentioned scenarios are perfectly legal per state law, and illegal per Omaha's municipal code, and understandably so. The Omaha municipal codes are just some of the tools we've relied heavily upon to combat gun crime and prevent homicides in Omaha. If you intend to remove these tools, all we ask is that you do so with your eyes wide open so that your constituents, both rural and urban, will know what that outcome will mean. The Omaha Police Officer Association stands willing and ready to have the detailed discussions required to ensure that the interplay between state and local gun laws is understood while maintaining the balance between supporting law-abiding gun owners' constitutional rights and protecting our cities from those who are dangerous, either through criminal activity or negligence. And we are committed to those conversations, as Dr. Kilpaki and Senator Hildreth has said. We, we are having those conversations. And I'll answer any questions you may have. I also handed out a pamphlet to give you some scenarios of the differences between city ordinances and the state laws. Thank you very much for your testimony, Senator Blood. Thank you, Senator Moranti, and thank you for your service to Omaha. Thank um, you. So, in his presentation, Senator Hilger said that he was working with your organization to potentially amend the uh, bill proposal. What would have to be amended in order for you to be in agreement with it? Well, obviously, we have we haven't seen the language yet, uh, but I know that we've had some we've had some very honest and frank discussions with each other about the priorities that that, that members of the Omaha Police Officer Association have, and and on the other end of the argument, the uh, the concerns that that people on the other end have when it comes to preserving uh, people's gun rights, and we're trying to we're trying to discuss that to see if it's possible to find that happy balance between preventing a situation where gang members especially young gang members, can run around the city with handguns, long guns, in cars, on the street, um, while at the same time finding a, a way that counterbalances that by, by ensuring that 
lawful responsible gun owners feel that their rights are being upheld. And so as an, as an expert in this area, you probably heard me earlier talk about the federal law. And in the presentation, they're talking about patchwork and, you know, I'm driving from this county to another county. But it sounds like, if, especially if the gun is not loaded, that much of what they said in their initial presentation was covered under the federal government. As a law enforcement officer, is, is that your experience? If I'm driving from Sarpy County um, out to, say, the, the city of Kearney, and, and I have a, a handgun, and that handgun is not loaded, I'm permitted, and I were to be stopped, say, on I-80. I know that that's outside of Omaha, but but what is what has been the policy with people like that? Do you sure. guys immediately well, assume that they're guilty of something, or? No, a lot of it depends on, it depends on the facts at hand. So number one, uh, we routinely come across people, whether they be people with bad intentions or people with good intentions that are, that are armed. Um, we, easily, we quickly start going down the legal analysis that we have to use as police officers on the streets. Do they have a concealed carry permit? Um, if they do, we know exactly. It's, those are the people that we love dealing with because they're trained, they're professional, um, they know exactly what to do, and everything goes smooth. Um, if they don't have a CCW permit, um, then we have to start to go down a little bit more detailed analysis. What is their intentions? Is the gun loaded? Is it concealed? Um, and we have to we have to then unfortunately make a snap decision one way or another. Right. Is this someone who has good intentions or bad intentions? And and that's that's why we supported the CCW law so heavily. It made our job so much easier being able to, to make those distinctions. Were you aware of the federal law in reference to transportation? Um, I, I wasn't aware of a federal law in reference to transportation. I'm aware of the federal laws that were discussed earlier about drug users and possession of firearms and ammunition. I wasn't aware of a federal law with regard to transportation of a, of a weapon. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Wayne. Thank you for coming today. Thank um, you. Me and you have been on opposite sides in the courtroom, but uh, <laughs> we're on the same side on this one, I think. Um, so with that, uh, give you a background on how long you've been on law enforcement. Sure. Um, I've been with the Omaha Police Department for over 20 years now. And how long have you been with the gang unit? been on the gang unit coming up on two years. And are you the head of the gang unit? I, uh, I'm the first line supervisor for the North Gang Suppression Unit on the evening shift. And what type of training have you had in gang related activities, I guess? Uh, we, we routinely have various, various training on gang related activities, whether it be uh, uh, tactical training, uh, intelligence based training, dealing with the culture of, of young gang members, older gang members. Uh, training pertaining to firearm laws and, and, and the way and the interplay between police officers and those laws. And that training is all over the country you go to? Uh, sometimes local, sometimes you do you do have to travel for it, yes. And how many investigations roughly have you had as it relates to uh, gang issues? It's a it's a daily occurrence. I'd say we're engaged in multiple investigations on on, on virtually a daily basis. Over a thousand maybe? In your, in your in your time on the police force, I think uh, I think uh, just my crew alone, uh, hundreds, fair to say, in the in the time that I've been on the gang unit. So, for the record, what I basically just did is qualify him as an expert in gang activity. If we were in the court of law, so based off of you being an expert in the gang activity, particularly around Omaha and North Omaha, the current passage of this bill in its current form, in your expert opinion, would that hinder your ability? to combat gang violence and gang activities? It would, and I, and I think you can see by some of the examples, which by the way, some of the detectives that we work together came up with a list of recent examples, and uh, the chief was kind enough to allow us to share it with, with, uh, with this committee. I took the names off for purposes of privacy for the, uh, for the suspects, but this is an example of, of various times multiple times in which we have been left with the local codes and, and because we didn't have any options when it came to the existing state statutes. Oh, I almost said no further questions as if I was in trial, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Uh, did you listen to Senator Hilger's opening? Were you here for that? I did. Okay. So I think he laid out his fundamental objectives with LB 68. So 
with what you heard Senator Hilger say and what I just understood your, your back and forth with, with Senator Wayne, do you believe that it is possible to craft this bill in a form that we achieve the fundamental objectives that, Sen that, that Senator Hilger's uh, is going after without endangering uh, or hindering your ability to combat gang violence? You know, I think there are there are there are laser focused areas that I think we might be able to find common ground on. <coughs> when it comes to a one size fits all application of gun laws from Garing to, to Omaha, I think that's gonna be difficult because, for example, the majority of the state is rural. Um, it is illegal for anybody, wherever wherever you are, to transport a loaded shotgun in a vehicle on a public roadway. Not the case for a loaded rifle. In talking with game wardens, I know the loaded rifle is left out because the farmers want, the ranchers want the ability to, as I, as I said in my testimony, take care of the coyotes, especially for a concern of their, of their calves. What is illegal, though, is to transport a loaded rifle or a loaded shotgun on a snowmobile. Well, unless my gang members start suddenly getting on snowmobiles and, and driving around, we're going to be left with not a lot of options if we can't enforce the loaded rifles in a car. So there is a, some things that are, I think it's fair to say there are standards which make sense in Omaha, which I wouldn't want to impose on Gehring. And I, I ask the question because I'm simply trying to, 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 to figure out whether your concerns and his objectives are inherently opposed to each other or if there is I think it's possible, if, if we focus in on what we're most concerned about, I think it is possible to find common ground. Okay. And, and, and we are committed to continuing to have those discussions. Okay, thank you. Senator Burke. Thank you, Chairman. All right, uh, just for clarification, and I, did, I was not here for the introduction, but if I have a, a CCW, and I am in the city of Omaha, and I have a loaded gun with me, other than restrictions that are put on by this, I could be anywhere in the city of Omaha. That's right. Could you? No registration either. Okay. Thank you, Senator Wayne. Senator Wayne. Uh, I have a CCW too. I just feel like taking it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Senator Wayne. Uh, Senator Breezy. Thank you, Senator Marotti, and thank you for being here. Uh, you've given us a handout here with looks like about seven examples of where local ordinance was used and state statute had no application, correct? That's correct. Uh, how many such examples are there like that in the course of a year in the experience of OPD? I can, tell you, I can tell you that I, I didn't come prepared with total numbers. I can tell you that, that they're commonly used, especially the transportation of concealed firearms, the transportation of long guns, minor in possession of firearms. Those are, those are very commonly used by the gang unit and by officers in, in high crime areas. They typically result in standalone charges, charges under the ordinance only, no violation of state law in, they, in most instances? They do, and actually there was an example in that, in that pack where we, uh, some detectives were investigating a, a homicide scene that had happened a few days prior. We noticed some gang members that were frequenting that area on a public road. They had a loaded, uh, revolver in the cup holder in their center console. Um, they were underage, 20 and age 19. Uh, they were arrested initially. We tried for carrying concealed weapon because it wasn't readily observed from outside the vehicle, as well as minor possession and unlawful transportation. Ultimately, the prosecutor could not continue with the CCW charge, and we were luckily left with the unlawful transportation of a concealable firearm and the unlawful possession of a concealable firearm based on the fact that they're under 21. Absent those ordinances, we we would have had no options. And that could have been a, a dangerous situation. Maximum penalty under those ordinances is a year? It depends on the, uh, on the offense, but uh, many of those are up to a year. Um, but then also we have multiple year potential for probation as well, where uh, we, you know, we're big believers in probation, even for certain gun offenders, especially if they're young and they're misdemeanor offenses. It gives us additional tools where they're eligible for either jail or for probation, even for the city uh, code violations. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Breezy. Any final questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. <coughs>